To reduce population, every 15 years God releases millions of monsters. Humanity tried to fight them, but monsters are stronger, people can only hide. The film begins with a story about the so-called First Judgment Day. Then, from the depths of the earth, from ordinary minds, hordes of monsters poured out. They killed millions of people, destroyed cities. A real war began with these monsters and in the end, they were exterminated. On the site of the former wells, protective installations were built, gates, which are designed to protect people from repeated intrusions. Fifteen years had passed. The world was able to recover a bit from the experience. One of those who were lucky enough to survive is Laura. She works at the school. She has a persistent but unsuccessful male friend Milton, whom she periodically refuses dates. Most likely, the reason for this is resentment towards her ex-husband, Dave. He was not with Laura during the Day of Judgment and she pregnant had to survive on her own. Dave and Laura have a son, 15-year-old Tyler. He disappears all day at the skate park with his friends and his girlfriend, Maddie. In his spare time, he plays computer games and is a bargaining chip in the difficult relationship between his father and mother, who broke up immediately after his birth. Meanwhile, the situation is heating up. An eclipse is approaching, and this is one of the heralds of a possible monster invasion. In addition, seismic activity has increased, protective dome personnel are conducting emergency checks, and there is very disturbing news in the news. Mass extinction of fish began everywhere. The same thing happened the day before the first judgment day. Migration is another alarming signal, everything is repeating itself, as it was 15 years ago. Tyler is spending the weekend at his dad's when the phone rings. Dave gets a call from his old friend Ted. He is sure that the new judgment day will be tomorrow. He insists that Dave urgently take the family and come to his shelter before the eclipse. Meanwhile, the first monster appears under the protective dome, quietly sneaking up the stairs. At this time, Laura calls Dave. She has also seen the news and demands that Dave bring Tyler home. Milton has reserved a shelter, and she's sure it's the only thing that can save them. Dave reassures her that he is the father and Tyler is safe with him. Tyler receives a text, reads it, and quietly leaves the house while his father is talking. Laura is in a panic, Dave's house is not secure and he must bring Tyler to her immediately. Dave agrees. He goes to Tyler's room, but he's not there. Milton rushes Laura, the shelter is filling up, they need to hurry. She explains that she can't find Tyler. Milton uses his phone number to find him at the skate park. Tyler is really there with Maddie. She is nervous, her parents left, she was left alone. She is very scared and asks Tyler not to leave her. Tyler promises that he will never do what his father did, he will not leave Maddie alone. Suddenly, a bird cry is heard, huge flocks of birds fly in one direction. People in the park run in panic. Everyone leaves town, Dave goes to the park to look for Tyler. He gets into a giant traffic jam and runs in search of his son, leaving the car behind. At this time, under the dome, the worker checks the instruments. There is a rustle, some strange sounds. A monster appears, it rushes and tears the worker apart. The soldiers standing nearby shoot at it, but to no avail, ordinary bullets do not harm it. Tyler and Maddie look on in horror at the reigning panic. Dave comes running as Tyler explains to his father that Maddie had nowhere to go and he couldn't leave her. Laura drives up with Milton and takes everyone to the shelter where the seats are booked. There is just over an hour left before the eclipse. There is complete chaos in the city, people are trying to escape, traffic jams are everywhere. Finally, they get to the shelter, but it is cordoned off by the military and only women and children are let in. Dave asks Tyler to take care of his mother and sends them to the shelter. He and Milton remain in the crowd. Tyler goes to the shelter but then runs to his father. Laura and Maddie rush after him. Tyler screams, he is my father, I will not leave him. At this time, information appears on the scoreboard that the shelter is completely filled, there are no more places. Wasting no time, they run to the car. Dave offers to go to Ted's hideout in the desert, and Milton suggests hiding at the school, which is nearby and there is a basement. Another traffic jam, dozens of cars block the road. They get out of the car. An earthquake begins, and the solar disk is covered with a shadow. The eclipse has begun. Under the protective dome, the monsters make their way out. Their crowds, crawling, flying, they capture the city. Dave suggests leaving the city, it's much more dangerous here. He wants to drive himself, but Milton is outraged, this is his car and he knows how to save everyone. They have a fight with Dave, but then Milton is grabbed by a flying monster, soaring with him into the sky. Laura screams heart-rendingly, Dave stuffs her into the car, and they try to get out of this hell. They drive along the canal. Dave reassures the children, everything is fine, we will get out. The car is running out of gas. Dave wants to find a replacement for it. There are several cars ahead. 
Dave gets into one of the cars. An elderly man hid in the back seat. He glances at a huge bloody monster that looks like the skeleton of a bull. He is very close. The bull passes by the car without noticing them, and begins to chew on the lying body. Dave very quietly rolls the car back to Laura and the kids. Now both cars are standing side by side, but they need to somehow get over to a new one. Meanwhile, the bull noticed them. Then the man gets out of the car, sprinkles the bull with salt from the jar that he was holding in his hands. The bull stopped, the kids and Laura managed to run into Dave's car. Then the bull rushes at the man and tears him to shreds. But Dave manages to drive away from there. Hordes of monsters flock to the city from all sides. Dave is driving down an abandoned road in the mountains. They drive up to Ted's hideout. It is really sound and looks like a concrete bunker. There are cameras on the roof, but no one reacts when they knock. The doors are closed. Ted is sitting behind the monitor. A gun is put to his neck. Someone is standing behind. Monsters run in a herd along the mountain. They rush straight to the shelter. Dave grabs a tire iron in an attempt to protect the family. But at the last moment, the doors of the bunker open and they run into it. Dave happily hugs Ted, besides him, his wife Stella is in the bunker, and a military man is sitting in the corner. Ted introduces him as his acquaintance, Corporal Garrett Jensen. The monitors show how the monsters are trying to smash the door. Everyone is tense, and Garrett keeps to himself. Maddie asks how the monsters feel them, can they see through the walls? Garrett smirks, they react to light, heat, but I think they see our soul. They are the offspring of the devil, which means God too. They torment the flesh, but feed on the soul. Are you religious corporal? Laura asks. Today, yes, he replies. He says that on the first judgment day he worked at a refinery. When the monsters poured in there, he managed to dive into a pond of salty mud, where they were afraid to approach. He sat in the dirt and listened as the monsters destroyed 150 of his colleagues and friends. Garrett is very engrossed in his story and doesn't notice Ted signaling Dave to touch the knife. Dave understands and quietly takes the knife. That is why it is called judgment day, continues Garrett, the devil rules on this day. At this time, something that looks like a centipede crawls from the street into a small hole in the mesh covering the window. Garrett says he'll be on duty first. Ted invites them to stay as well and looks meaningfully at Dave. But then Garrett pulls the gun out of its holster, forcing Dave to put down the knife. Garrett explains that he tried to hide and found this hideout. Kind Stella let him in, although Ted was against it. He survived the first time and will survive now, no matter what the cost. Tyler throws himself at Garrett, he tries to take the gun from him. But Garrett throws him away. Dave comforts the corporal. At this moment, a centipede-like monster rushes out of the wall at Stella. Ted rips it off his wife's neck and pours salt on it. Dave grabs a gun from Garrett and shoots it. They tie up Garrett, try to stop Stella's blood. Then Dave sees help come for the monsters, a huge bull. He understands that they are doomed, they need to get out of the bunker. The bull is trying to kick down the doors. Ted doesn't want to go out, he says his wife won't survive outside. But Stella asks him to go with everyone, there is an underground passage under the bunker, it leads to the mountains. Garrett persuades him to take him with him. He has a car with a full tank and he can take everyone to the gate. There are bunkers and the creatures came out of there. They will not come back. They do not believe him, but he insists. He was just trying to survive and now it is beneficial for him to help them. They decide to go. Get us there and we'll forget about everything. Dave promises Garrett. They arm themselves. Ted has a whole arsenal of weapons. The bull breaks down the doors more and more insistently, but they manage to run out into the tunnel. They go to the car. Stella becomes ill. Dave and Laura begin to argue. She chides him that they could be in the shelter now. Tyler then spots a monster on the side of the road. It's dead. Maddie approaches it. Here, long tentacles of the monster protrude from a hole in the ground and twist around her legs, trying to drag her away. Maddie screams wildly. Tyler and Dave rescue her. Garrett offers his help and Dave cuts the ropes on his hands. They go to the top of the mountain. They see a devastated and burning city. They go down to the car, but it won't start. Monsters appear on top of the mountain and rush straight towards them. Garrett tries to start the engine, while Stella looks at the crowd of monsters, then at the gun in her husband's hands. She draws her gun, gets out of the car, Ted begs her to hand over the gun. But Stella turns away and goes to the monsters, she understands that she is doomed. Ted calls her, crying, but Dave stuffs him into the car. At the last moment, they manage to leave. Crowds of monsters rush after them. On the way, they pick up a radio signal. They report that almost all the shelters could not withstand the onslaught and were ruined. Laura puts her hand on Dave's shoulder as he strokes her. They come to the gate. It's empty, but the doors are open. Garrett says the hideout is in the basement. They're heading there, but the power needs to be restored. Garrett and Dave decide to do it. The others go to look for the first aid post. Ted has a wound in his back. Dave restores electricity. Garrett says that the gate was prepared for a second invasion. Tons of salt were pumped into them. 
But the well was too deep. They go to the others and then they hear the roar of monsters and see a bloodied corpse. There are two hours left until the end of the eclipse. Garrett offers to hide in a chemical warehouse. There the doors are impenetrable. Suddenly, a monster attacks Garrett. Together with Dave they manage to deal with it. But the rest of the monsters run to the noise. Garrett quickly runs through a door and closes it behind him. He gives himself some kind of injection. His veins are swollen and black. Dave returns to his family and asks Tyler to keep his mother safe while he's away. He wants to level the playing field and funnel the salt water through the tank pipes to keep the monsters out. Laura kisses Dave and tells him to be careful. Dave makes his way through the ventilation, sees how the monster devours the prey. Dave needs to turn off the taps next to that chewing monster. He manages to open the faucet, water is collected in containers. Dave climbs back, but the monster sensed it and rushed after him. Dave fights back, sprinkles it with salt and the monster crumbles to dust. Meanwhile, the others had already been hunted down and surrounded by monsters. Tyler shoots back. Then Dave's voice is heard from the loudspeaker. He asks to turn on the fire alarm. The monsters have surrounded them, they are getting closer. Ted tells Tyler, protect the family, son, and goes at the monsters with an axe. Several monsters pounce on him at once. Tyler shoots back, bloodied Ted tries to fight back. Tyler runs out of ammo, he turns on the fire alarm, jets of salt water hit from all sides, they fall on the monsters and they crumble into bloody dust, squealing in pain. They are saved, but Ted is dead. The eclipse ends. All monsters return through the gate back. Children with Laura run out to some area. Garrett is standing there with a gun. He shoots Tyler. It's not our world anymore. He won't survive anyway. God has a day off. He says and aims again. Laura tries to cover her son with her body. Dave runs in and hits Garrett in the head with a fire extinguisher. Dave throws himself at Tyler and Laura. Here, a huge monster appears from below. It lunges at Garrett, who is closer to it, and slowly swallows him whole. They run into the medical unit, make a salty mixture in a cylinder, the monster is getting closer. It kicks down the doors, but Dave manages to throw a canister of concoction at him. It explodes, the monster roaring wildly and crumbling to ash. Laura hugs Dave, they don't believe they've been saved. Embracing, both couples go outside. The world is ravaged, but the monsters are gone. Maybe this is another respite, but one thing is clear, life will be reborn and light will always defeat darkness.